Let's welcome in our co-hosts, who man who's very comfortable in weather like this because he's used to spending his uh, life on water, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield. You're right, Rob. It's It feels natural out there. It should not. Yeah. <laughs> it should not. It's, it's <laughs> enough rain already. Stop. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot of flooding. I went back the driving home the other day from last Monday. I hit a pothole that was covered with water and blew a tarp. So I have four hundred dollars. Can I can I uh, give an invoice to to Hornby? You can give it to the West Virginia Department of Highways. I think that's where you should. Send well, your Hornby's a delegate, so maybe it's all one and the same. Yeah. Yeah, I would uh, contact the highway department. I get an email every uh, week from the Department of Transportation about the potholes that they're fixing, mm. and I've not seen Berkeley yeah. County on that list once. And and I feel stupid with this. I knew the pothole was there. <laughs> I see it every time I drive by there. But some reason the other day, covered with water. You just water, went not, through. Yeah. You just well, went through. Well, I'm sorry, Bill. Yeah. We're all very sorry for you. <laughs> I am too. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you have a better commute home this yeah. time. Before we get started, I'd like to make a shout out to a gentleman that uh, listens to the show every day. He's from Charleston, South Carolina. He's also a big North Carolina State fan. He's an alumni of North Carolina State. He has two teams in the Final Four. So Scott McKellar is a very happy man today. Yeah, NC State, uh, it's one of my favorite teams because of Jimmy Valvano. Yeah. Uh, when I was 20, I think it was 1983, they made their run, improbable run to a state, uh, to a uh, national championship. And uh, we had some great Italian coaches back then. We had Jimmy Valvano, we had Raleigh Massimino, Louis Carnesecca, PJ Carlissimo. It was a bonanza of Italian talent coaching basketball teams. And where did they go, Rob? What happened to them? They've disappeared. Well, you know. Yeah. And they might be dead by yeah. now, you know. <laughs> Let's say good morning to Maria Lawrence as well. Maria, good morning to you. Good morning. Thank Happy you. to be here. Thank you for that thought about them being dead. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, you know. I've got to try to cheer this room up a little bit between Bill's bad tire and Maria's death recently. Uh, Bill, how are you this morning? <laughs> Bill, Bill Curry the from the health department. Kara Harding, good morning to you both. Good morning. Doing hit, great hit this any, morning. Hit any potholes or kill any coaches off at you all? You know, it's hard to see potholes today because they're full of water. They are. Yeah, they are, you, aren't they? You just don't know what's under that water. Happened to the Admiral. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but uh, it, it's uh, yeah, it's a little, a little damp out there. All right. Kara Harding, good morning to you. Good morning. Are you as thrilled as always to be here? I am, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bill, you wanted to make uh, an announcement. Yeah, it's raining outside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a second announcement. On, on, yeah, um, as as you may or may not remember, um, I think one of the last times I was in here, um, um, Rob called Bill and I both um, quitters um, because of retirement times. Re- retirement quitting. Is quitters. The same thing. Yeah. So uh, um, yeah. So mine's going to be coming up the end of the end of the year. I'll be. Uh, concluding my uh, um, almost 30 years in public health career there and um, and uh, so I'm very ha- happy and proud to, to let everyone know for the first time in media that um, Kara Harding has been selected as the going to be the new public health director as a matter of fact she uh, it wasn't an April Fool's joke but she <laughs> took on that position on April 1st well, congratulations Thank you very Kara. Much. so you, you'll be replacing mr. Kearns I will Yes. Yeah. When when does this transition complete to the point where she's solo in charge? It's a work in progress, but uh, we got like nine months to get there. Because you got to retire first at the end of the year. Right. Yeah. So Officially, the, the start of next year. <laughs> so. so January first, you'll be the new director. She's on solo. I am now, but not on my own until the first of next year. So the nice thing is, that, as Bill mentioned, I have nine months to, to train with him. So he didn't throw me out to the wolves. Well, Kara's not also, nice. she's not new to public right. health. She's been with us for almost, what, 20 years? Correct. And um, so she's been entrenched within the in the two counties of Berkeley and Morgan. So uh, uh, couldn't couldn't ask for a better candidate. Well, congratulations, Carol Harding. Sure. So uh, I assume that you had to open this job up as a pool of applicants and, and such. Are you free to discuss how many applicants you got for the job? Um, we'll we'll, we'll uh, discuss who applied. But, yeah, we, we opened it up internally. So that meant anyone, with, of course, within the, the – health department could apply that met the qualifications but also it being internally it opened up to anyone that is currently already within the um, DHHR um, um, uh, pool of 
employees across the state so it's an internal opening so we did not have anyone we had a couple internal within the health department apply but um Kara definitely um the and it was close on the applicants that did apply um Kara brought to the table a couple more um extra qualities um that um, we felt would be a, a good addition and um, so yeah so it's always great when you can um, promote from within and um, we we want that and it gives you gives the person gives the person that gets selected a, a a good pat on the back and unfortunately those that did not sometimes it's a little bit of disappointment but um but yeah we were very proud to to offer Kara the position and even happier that she selected it Kara, what uh what uh, gave you interest in this position well i kind of felt like it was the next step for me mm-hmm. and uh, i was excited to to move up and uh, this is the top position that I could be obviously I'm not a doctor to be the health officer so and uh, like I said I I wanted a new challenge and I was excited and sometimes it's a little scary to think of someone coming from the outside as well a lot of us that have been there a long time so those of us that uh, from within that applied we we kind of felt that you know with our experience and knowledge and history uh, that we want to, you know, keep that. Uh, like I said, people, sometimes someone coming in from the outside is good, but sometimes it's it's bad as well. But like I said, I just was looking for a new challenge and, uh, you know, felt like this, this was meant to be. Uh, I will miss what I did. Uh, you know, environmental health has been my love for 20 years, and uh, but I'll still be involved in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, in one way, shape, or form. So, uh, and it's great to get a new position and not leave those that you work with. No. They're still there. So. Bill, Bill has explained the Rob responsibilities <laughs> to you, has he not? And that there are many on camera and in person appearances that will be required over the next few years. That's okay. I'll just try to forget about the video part and just focus <laughs> on the radio part. Bill? Yeah. Uh, congratulations, Karen. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the job is exactly what uh there one time a few couple of years ago you'd actually split the duties but now you've combined the duties as both director and also the cfo is that correct um that's actually going to remain the same we we had, we did attempt to um to split that um previously and then um and then our candidate that we had hired did not uh, did not work out. So we we basically they, they came back into to my possession um, of doing both the um, CEO and the CFO portion. Um, we are once again uh, that 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 idea of needing that because of us being the second largest um, health department or county in the state, and also having being a multi million dollar budget. It's 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 difficult for just one person to do all those responsibilities now and it's not going to get any less. So we are still keeping it uh, as a split, um a CFO and CEO. Um for um next year I'll i I'll remain on as a, a contracted um CFO. Um so but the day to day operations and, and all that parts will be Kara's position. Um so we are still going to keep that split. I don't see our uh, our finance financial um writing grants and 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 the dollar amount of our annual budget getting any less um as we continue to grow um and certainly even the health department we have i we have items in the that's on plans for our building expansion and things of that nature we're planning for the future so um we're not going to be switching it back so just care would have to do everything um it's taken me 30 years to get acclimated to doing all those jobs not only being the the finance person the accountant the um the human resource director um the public information officer all those things it's taken a lot of years and and it was a lot less responsibilities back 30 years ago than what it is now yeah i'm struck by the fact you have nine months of transition i come from the military where if we're lucky we'll have one week in fact i frequently think one week is too long and yet Kara's coming in with 20 something years experience in this office and you've taken nine months to transition is that for her benefit or your benefit well i think it's for the county's benefit that we want to have a smooth transition that we're not going to see things get um, left behind and as i mentioned earlier 
before we went on the air. There's certain things we, as, as a public health director, you may only do once or twice a year. Um, one of the big parts that's coming up is Kara needs to hire her replacement as environmental health chief. Um, so that's going. That's a big position to have to hire, and um, so that'll take some work. But that's also open right now for um, internal applicants. And um, so, yeah, nine months is is great. Um, usually, it's uh, you don't get to even start interviewing or hiring of someone till after somebody had already left. So, um, we're or great. Uh, it's great that we have this ability. Yeah, for the ones of us that know public health, just kind of the outside looking in with broad, broad terms there are various components to what you do sanitation is one environmental health and what are the various components of public health well uh, the main two parts of course is our environmental health that the care has supervised over for a number of years and then the other part is medical um, we do we, we do way more in the medical side than just give out birth control pills and, and flu shots. Um, we do um, all kinds of um, different testing. We do con consultations. We do travel vaccines. We do um, all kinds of adult vaccines. We do family um, planning, which we had that encompassed with breast and cervical screening. That, so it's now women's health clinics. So we do those clinics, um, see a number of different people. We build private insurance companies um, for services that we offer in the clinical side. Um, and then we have, of course, the environmental that does, um, does all the um, wastewater and restaurant inspections and daycares and, and tattoo parlors and body piercings, all those kind of things. And then we also have a full-time epidemiologist on staff that does all of our disease tracking and has been very instrumental throughout the pandemic but so there's many different parts and then plus when you get into the administration we we have a half-time um, health officer that that's, that didn't sound good half-time health officer part-time <laughs> part-time health officer. yeah <laughs> so we have a part-time health officer that works uh, that we have employed for half of what a full-time equivalent would be um so and then being public information officer so we get to come out and do things like this and be able to talk to the community and do do different events but you know it's a position that's on call 24 7 so you get you don't get a day off you get called in the middle of the night for things and the weekends and and um so it's a it's a busy position Maria. So, Bill, you alluded to the fact that, um, you know, you're growing, expanding, second largest uh, county um, in, the, in the state in terms of services. So talk a little bit about your physical plant. Um, I certainly know mm -hmm. um, where it is. Um, our listeners, it's 122 Waverly Court, former home of Hospice of the Panhandle. But there are trailers. You guys are... Um, expanding do you envision moving to another location or um, sort of annexes if you will um, at the current location actually what we're planning on doing yeah and it, it, it's a it's a great facility to be at and we did not know when we moved in there that we were going to need to expand even further because we went from a small facility there right uh, on Emmett Roush to um, 122 Waverly Court had to totally renovate the building to turn it into not only just a, an office building but also medical um, which the building was not made for um, so now we are seeing also with the different clinics that we're doing that we need to to split off once again not to move to a different location but to build on so we're going to have a couple uh, a couple thousand foot uh, square foot addition built on the environmental will move to that side so the whole area that's now of uh, the existing building is actually going to be turned into one big medical building so um, we'll have the environmental in a separate facility there that's attached to the building so we're looking forward to that um, we have all the architect plans and everything has been created it's going to be put out for bid uh, if not this week here very soon um, so we've had a couple different funding sources for that but pretty much um, uh, we've looked at um, scrimping and saving over the whole period of time that we've been there um, since we moved into the building through some grants and things of that nature that we're going to be able to fund that without having to ask the um, county commissioner or other agencies for funds to be able to do this addition so do we need that additional square footage right now Yes, for privacy and HIPAA um, to separate our clinics from environmental. So if you don't come in one build, one door to the building, 
you're seeing both people. Um, so we need the addition now, but we're going to need even more so in the future. What and, is your budget, Bill? Uh, right about $3.1 million. And of that, how much comes from the county commission? Um, we receive from the Berkeley County Commission, we receive $100,000 a year. Um, for Morgan County, we receive $40,000 a year. So the rest of it comes from where? We get we get funding also as part of the school levy that a lot of people don't realize. Um, it supports public health. Um, so we get almost $30,000 out of the school levy. And then also we get $40,000 from the city of Martinsburg. So if my rough maths together that's two point uh two hundred fifty thousand dollars and then you out of the three million dollar budget we then yes then we get so much from the state aid um it's based per capita um and then we write a lot of grants a lot of grants for different things that we do such as threat preparedness and and um, um, immunization grants and ones that come along that'll assist with paying for the services that we provide now so, do, you, do you have your own grant writer or do you use the counties um that would be me That'd be you, mm -hmm. okay. So from your build-out perspective, um, will the county handle that as well as they're doing the, the downtown facilities? Absolutely, and that's one of the great uh, assets that we, you we have a great partnership with our county commission. Um, they will be acting on that part. We're just, we, we're just, a, we're just funding it, um, but there's also a good bit of dollars that will also in-kind funding that will be coming from the county commission as well, and then they put everything out for bid and select the contractors and everything. All right, sounds easy. <laughs> Any, anybody can do this. Anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Now that you've announced Kara's uh, joining you as the the new super boss, when are you going to notify the county commission? That's a great title for your business card. <laughs> well, we're looking Kara forward Harding's to uh, super boss. We'll be looking forward to going and doing presentations and Kara doing a presentation to the county commission. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, how long does it take to hire Kara's replacement? Yet to be determined. Hopefully. Um, not months and months so we do have it open internally. yeah we have it open internally it's probably going to be open about to the 7th till the 7th and then and well any applicants at that point then uh carol will be setting up interviews for do you have any unfilled positions open positions at the health department you've not been able to fill we have two open sanitarian positions uh, that have been open, have closed, and I'm getting ready to look at the registry, which is what they will, we hire from. So, yeah, we have two openings. And just to think about it, once they're hired, it's at least a good year before they're fully functional. So. Talk Talk a little bit about what a right. sanitarian does. Sure. For the sure. So, as Bill mentioned, environmental and a lot of our um, – funds that come in are from our permits so that's another big piece to sure. where our money comes from but we're responsible uh, i still say well, we are environmental uh, has about 20 programs that they inspect so for instance uh, getting ready for pool season they inspect all the public pools before they open for the holiday uh, as bill mentioned daycares uh, swimming pools so you know and it, the uh, new one life uh, fitness facility that's coming in it has an indoor five lap pool you know we go in there before anything opens it's brand new and make sure it was built to spec do you do subdivision pools uh yes yes so uh, we don't come to private pools because that would be a little much but yes mm -hmm. we we make sure they have lifeguards if need be they have to have a certified pool operator that's in charge of the chemicals and uh, so there's a lot more to that than some people realize. Uh, you know, like I said, they just think we do food inspections and uh, septic and well. But, you know, uh, when we take the time to tell them what they do, they're really shocked. And they, and they say, oh, I didn't realize that you did that. And that's why it's never a dull moment. So it, it that's why it takes a lot of time for someone to get the training because they have to go through class and learn these 20 different programs to be able to go out there and know what they're talking about. What does that job pay? Uh, the special hiring rate in uh, Berkeley and Morgan County is 40000 Care a couple I, and ho but Hold on a second there, sure, Bill. Sure. Yeah. And does, does that include, you said special hiring rate means you're actually able to get more? We, uh, that special hiring rate is more than what other counties pay in the state. So it's less. And that would explain why you're having trouble filling those two positions, possibly. Well, the um, we have to go by the West Virginia Civil Service guidelines, and mm -hmm. they have salary structures for positions, and so that one is actually by civil service in the in the mid thirty thousand range. So we were able to get the Board of Health to um, to 
put a proposal before the uh, Division of Personnel for a special hiring rate for a number of different positions, and that was one of them that we did as well as our nurses. And, and just to be able to get a little bit higher salary based on our locality, but it's still very low considering um, for a sanitarian you have to have a minimum of a four-year college degree. We actually have one of our sanitarians even, even has a master's in public health. And is there a chance for advancement in, in position and pay? Uh, care care uh, is an example. Step right. increases, but, but that job's filled. <laughs> right? So as they start, they start in training, and uh, as they complete different elements of training, they become a Sanitarian 1, a Sanitarian 2, and they can become registered with the state and also uh, through NEHA, which is the national certification to uh, be registered. Uh, and all those, uh, as they advance, uh, they as Bill mentioned, uh, their pay increases. And then, you know, like I said, I went through all those steps, uh, all the way from the supervisor position to the sanitarian chief, uh, and that is the highest position that you can have uh, within environmental health. Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, I should have thought should have thought about this question earlier. Uh, a couple of years, a few years or so ago, the requirement for septic system was only during installation. You do not you do not reinspect for a fail, uh, failing septic system. Is that still, uh, that's still correct? So if a complaint comes in on a failing system, we go in on that complaint and uh, look at it. And of course, if it needs to be corrected, we work with the homeowner to get it corrected within a certain time frame. Uh, but uh, generally, we don't go out looking for them. Uh, only we find out about them generally when someone complains, a neighbor or something of that nature. Unfortunately, call, call that the sniff test there. Bill. Well, yeah, but unfortunately, karsh topography, a lot of them fail downward. They don't fail upward, so you don't really know mm -hmm. that you have a failed system, but yet it can be polluting the, uh, the groundwater. Well, and it's tough, you know, like I said, that's why we encourage people, especially if they are on wells, yeah. to make sure that they're checking that yearly because from year to year, uh, it can, you know, have... Uh, bacteria in it based upon surface contamination and you know there is still a lot of farmland out there and you know where there's a cow pasture uh, we've had some water samples come back with E. coli and so you honestly you don't want to be drinking that um, out of your tap water. Yeah uh, West uh, or excuse me Virginia I think has an assistance for someone with a failed system but West Virginia there is no financial assistance at all is there? There are some uh, there's the Canaan Valley Institute uh, there is uh, other assistance that's offered that we uh, can give out in the office if someone is having a financial uh, need for that definitely yeah i run a study a few years so ago about how much it would we needed to have a uh, sustainable assistance for failed systems and it's about tw 10 to 12 million dollars so it's yeah. no it's no small price to change uh, price so do you have you mentioned the the sanitarian positions what about bill we talked about this during the pandemic how about nurses how are your What's your nursing staff like? I mean, it seems to have settled down generally post-pandemic, but um, I know it's always been a challenge for you all to um, to hire and then keep um, your nursing staff. How many do you have? And we and have um, we have in Berkeley County. We have, of course, we have our nursing directors, uh, Tanya Manley. She's been on here uh, once with us. Um, so she's been a, she's been a great addition. She's been with us um, about a year and a half now. Um, and so then we have a, a full time nurse here. We have a nurse that we share between um, Berkeley and Morgan County Health Departments. They come down on some heavy clinic days here. And then we have another uh, part time nurse up in uh, Morgan County. So um, could we use additional nursing yes um, the uh, programs that they're they're working within not only for all the immunizations some we have peak times for those we know during influenza vaccination season it's a little bit of a peak time as well as when children are getting vaccinated for going back to school and um, so we can use additional nurses um, we'll be looking at that down in the future actually Kara will be and um, seeing about filling those spots um, but it, it, as, the, as the county it continues to grow, um, people are out there seeking public health. Um, so it's not only just, um, it's, it's not just our basic programs, it's a lot of education uh, that we provide to communities. So we're gonna need to have those additional staff members. Um, and then doing um, lots of um, things such as being on the radio here to educate people as well as the upcoming home show.
And that is the 6th and 7th. You'll have free rate on test kits you'll be giving out at the home show both days. Yeah, all you got to do is stop up and ask for a confidential rate on test kit. <laughs> totally free. Totally free. Bill, thanks for coming in. Hey, it's great to be in here. Making the announcement. Kara, congratulations. Thank yes. you very much. It's nice to see you smile for the first time now that it's over <laughs> here in studio. Good job. It's not that bad. <laughs> I know it's not. I do it every single day. It can't be that bad. <laughs> right?